Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Vray from Wizards of the Coast. And there are a lot of cards in Magic. And when you combine some of them together, well, sometimes you get unintended effects. Here are three really bizarre things that can happen in a game of Magic the Gathering. Number one. So we all know our parts of a turn, right? Untap, upkeep, draw, main phase, that good stuff. And if you know your parts of the turn, you know that the turn ends with the end step, where end of turn abilities happen. Well, that's not quite right. There is one more thing that happens in the end phase, the cleanup step. It's kind of like a secret part of the turn, invisible to most people. It happens every turn and is quite important. This is where until end of turn effects end, like a pump effect or granting an ability, players discard down to hand size, and in general, the game takes care of all the things that need to happen between turns. So why don't you know it better? Why don't you cast instance here instead of at end of turn? Well, because players don't get priority to do things during the cleanup step. Normally, it just happens and nobody notices. But there is one weird exception. If somehow an ability triggers during cleanup, players will get priority to respond to it. And then, because the game still needs to properly clean up, there will be another cleanup step after that one. How could something happen here? Well, let's say that you have eight cards in your hand and have to discard a card when you get to cleanup. If you have a card like Confessor in play that's going to cause a triggered ability to trigger, players can respond to this and go back and forth as normal. Then, once people are done, the game says, okay, that cleanup step didn't resolve perfectly. Let's have another one. It has one, nothing triggers this time, and the turn ends. But what if there was a way to abuse this strange rule? Here's a combo deck I built and played once in a tournament. First, you assemble Swans of Bryn Argol and Seismic Assault. This well-known combo allows you to discard a card to deal two damage to swans, which draws you two cards. You'll draw more lands and, well, you get the idea. Eventually, you hit Dathmore Salvage, which lets you replace one of the draws with a land to guarantee you can keep going. This means you'll get through your whole deck. And if you find enough lands along the way, you can kill your opponent by discarding lands to assault. But there's a problem. Sometimes you won't draw enough lands during this process to kill your opponent, especially if they've gained a bunch of life. Or if you want to use this combo in commander, you're going to need to deal a lot more damage. Enter the cleanup step. I added one copy of original Kozilek. Any Eldrazi will do. And now here's what happens. You execute your combo and go through your deck. You throw any excess land at your opponent's face. Then you end your turn with eight cards in hand. You discard Kozilek in the cleanup step, ideally putting an even number of cards into your graveyard. A trigger goes on the stack to shuffle your graveyard into your library. Now here's the important part. After that trigger resolves, inside your cleanup step, you'll get priority one more time. So execute your combo again. Start pitching lands at swans, drawing cards, and all that good stuff. If you dredge into Kozilek, it'll reset your deck and you just keep going. But when you draw Kozilek, finish out your combo and draw your deck. Then end your turn. You'll get another cleanup step. And during it, the game says, hey, you have too many cards in your hand. So you'll discard Kozilek. It'll trigger, which gives you priority and cleanup, and you repeat this process again. The end result, you can take infinite cleanup steps where you deal infinite damage. Using the cleanup step to kill people, now that's gorgeous. Number two, we probably all know the game can end in a draw. For example, at a tournament, players can agree to intentionally draw. Or if everyone's life total reaches zero at the same time via a card like Flame Rift or Death Cloud, the game is a draw too. That all makes sense. But those aren't the only ways games can end in draws. If you have removed all decisions to stop the process, the game just keeps going indefinitely, which draws the game. To use a well-known example, if there is an Oblivion Ring, exiling an Oblivion Ring as the only permanent on the battlefield, 
and you cast a third Oblivion Ring, it enters the battlefield, exiles the ring, which returns a ring, which must exile the one you just played, which returns the original, and so on. Unless anybody can stop it, the game is an endless cycle of ringing. LSV made this one famous when he did it on Magic Online and crashed the game. Good times. This, by the way, is why cards like Banishing Light only target your opponent stuff now. There are plenty of instances like this in Magic. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down below. One of my favorites, though highly improbable, is stealing an opponent's Lich's Mirror and then getting to 10 poison counters. Because you shuffle in only permanents you own, that doesn't include the stolen mirror. And because it doesn't remove poison from you, you just continually lose the game, which is replaced by drawing seven cards until the end of time. But I digress. Number three, activated abilities on creatures are something we use all the time. And if a permanent doesn't tap, you can just keep using them. For example, you can fire breathe Shivan Dragon as many times as you want. Sure, makes sense on the battlefield. But did you know this also extends to other places? Let's say I have a Ninja of the Deep Hours in my hand. Man, I love that card. I attack with a few creatures, my opponent blocks one of them. Then after blocking, they cast something like a Curtain's Call to destroy two of my creatures. Bummer. Well, not only can I Ninja of the Deep Hours one of them back to my hand, but I can actually save both of them. Because Ninjutsu is an activated ability and returning an unblocked attacker is part of the cost, you can actually activate it multiple times from your hand to return multiple creatures. Useful for dodging that curtains call, saving your creatures before you cast a board sweeper, or just using one ninja to bring back two of your suite enters the battlefield effects. And it's not just ninjas. This works for all kinds of activated abilities in other places. For example, at one point in Standard, there was a deck which combined Martyr of Sands and Proclamation of Rebirth to gain a ridiculous amount of life. You would gain so much life that you essentially became untouchable. However, you could still deck out. Well, enter Chrono Savant. If Chrono Savant is in your graveyard, you could activate it as many times as you wanted. It doesn't come into play until the ability resolves, but you'll skip a turn for each time you activate it. So if you had 20 mana and wanted to skip, say, 10 turns in a row, so your opponent decked out first once you were at over a thousand life, go for it. Keep an eye open for places and cards where you can use this to your advantage. You might be surprised. So what did you think? This is a brand new kind of video for me. So if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below. And if so, maybe I'll do more like it in the future. I'll talk with you again on Friday. And in the meantime, may you find some truly wild things to do with your magic cards. You got this. Like Waylay, which clearly was not intended to end step create three tutus that could attack next turn. Or cards like Howling Mine, which have been printed with a different wording for so long. Or how to handle cards from Portal, a set that didn't have any instants, so there were sorcery speed counter spells. We've made those instants now. There's even one of my